All right, welcome back as we continue on with our discovery of the 2012 uh, Canadian Intermediate Math Competition. So we're on question two right now in part B, which means we're going to be talking about full solutions here. So let's take a look. The line L1 has equation y equals negative four-thirds x. And it passes through the origin. Oh, that makes sense. You can plug in x equals zero, you'll get y equals zero. Okay. The line L2 has the equation y equals minus a half x plus five. And it crosses the x-axis at a point P. Lines L1 and L2 intersect at Q. So that's another point we're distinguishing. Question A, what are the coordinates of the points P and Q? And this one, they're specifically stating we don't really need to justify this. Okay. So we have a minus 4 thirds x, that's one line, and minus a half x plus 5, that's the other line. Okay. We want to figure out where the second line passes the x-axis, and we want to figure out where these two points intersect. All right, so let's take a look here. It's always a good idea. Let's just sort of draw these guys out a little bit. So origin, oops, the origin we have distinguished here. He is O. Actually, let's, uh, let's give him another color. All right, so we have our origin O. And we have two lines. So first one is sort of a four thirds, negative a four thirds. So it's it's going to come down through the origin. Ugh, that looks just awful. All right, let's see if we can do this a little better. So he's sort of going to come through the origin like this. Okay, and our second line, negative uh, a half. Here, let's let's label these guys. So this one's y equals negative four thirds x. It's not exactly drawn up properly, but we had the right idea. It's going from the top left to the bottom right, and so our other line is going to be. It's going to go through a point here. It's going to go through zero five. And it's also negatively sloped, but it's uh, not quite as steep. And that's y equals negative a half x plus 5. So that's our other line. So we have L1, we have L2. And the point where L2 intersects the x-axis, well, that's going to be point P. And the point where these guys intersect is going to be Q. So we do a little preliminary sketch. Preliminary. Uh, it's, it's not to scale. You know, uh, let's actually give these guys some colors as well. Just so we can highlight these points. We'll redo the origin a little bit. So these are the ones we're worried with, worried about. It's just a little sketch so that when we actually calculate things like Q, we already know that the X coordinate of Q is going to have to be negative, just based on our picture. We don't have a good idea as to what negative value it is, but if we come out with a positive value of X, we know we've done something wrong. Likewise, we know that P is going to have a positive X value. So we're just asked to figure out these points, uh, not a whole lot of justification required. So you can go for either one. Uh, let's go for P first. So being on the x-axis, P 
P is going to have to have a Y coordinate of zero. So if we set L2 equal to zero, Y equals negative a half X plus five, P is going to have X coordinate of, or Y coordinate of zero. So we know we're looking at something like this. The only thing we don't know is what the x value, the x coordinate of p is. So we need to rearrange this equation. Okay? We can do it a, a number of ways. I'm going to bring the half x over onto the left side. Okay. And then I just want x by itself, so I'm going to multiply by 2 to cancel out this half. And we get 10. So what does P look like? It's, it's 10, 0. And that makes sense. We have a positive X value here. All right, now how about Q? Well, we have to set both of these equations equal to each other. Okay, so Q, it's going to have the same Y coordinate regardless of what line we're looking at. But it's the formulas in terms of X that we need to equate. All right, so these two formulas have to be equal. The x values have to, the x expressions have to both come up with the same y value in order for the point to lie on both lines. So what can we do? Well, we can uh, start trying to bring everything, all the x's onto one side, all the numbers onto the other. So let's take a look here. All right, so we have minus 4 thirds x plus a half x equals 5. So we'd like to add these, get just some term just in x by itself. So we're going to have to get a common denominator of 6. And we now we can add these two. So it's going to come out to be negative 5, 6, x equals 5. Okay, so continuing on, if we want to just isolate x, we need to multiply by negative 6 over 5 on both sides. Oops. Okay, just basic manipulation of fractions, nothing too fancy here. And these 5s, they cancel out. So we're left with x equals negative 6. Before we go any further and calculate our y value, does this make sense? Yes, we have a negative x value. We already remarked that we're looking for negative x values because that's what the picture tells us Q will likely look like. All right, so now to calculate y, we plug in our value of x into either line, doesn't matter which. I'm gonna work that out. We get negative 8. Oh, no, not negative 8. Silly me, we get positive 8. The two minus signs cancel. So we get 24 over 3, which is just 8. Does this also make sense? Well, yes. Q looks like it has a positive Y value, the way we're looking at it. So what is Q? Q is negative uh, 6, 8. Fantastic. And that's all we were asked for part A. Just figure out the coordinates of P and Q. We didn't really, I mean, I explained a lot, but we didn't write down a whole lot of explanation. We just threw down our calculations. And we got P and Q. They looked like they worked. Uh, for Q, we could double check it by plugging negative uh, 6 into the line that we didn't use and making sure we still get 8 out. So, question B, find the area of triangle OPQ. Okay. So 
So let's redraw our little diagram. But now we can label coordinates. Okay, we know that this is going to be 10, 0 over here. We know this is going to be 0, 0. And we know up here we have negative 6, 8. Okay, that's Q, that's P, and that's O. So we're asked to figure out the area of triangle OPQ. Okay, so we try and think of ways we can uh, calculate area. Hmm. Well, we have all the coordinates, and there's certainly a formula for calculating the area of a triangle in terms of coordinates, so that's something we could try. What else could we do? We could make it part of a larger structure with, uh, so maybe we could make it part of a large tri uh, rectangle by uh, dropping a perpendicular from Q down to the x-axis and then drawing lines up here, figure out the area of that rectangle. Uh, and then subtract off the right angle triangles. But I think the probably the easiest thing to do, because uh, our line O to P lies so flat, is we could just use the formula a half base times height. So OPQ. So the area of this is going to be a half base times height. So what's the base? Well, the base is just going to be the distance, the length of OP, okay? And we can figure that out. They have the same Y coordinates, so distance between P and O, very simple to figure out. It's just the difference in their X coordinates, which is gonna be 10. Now, how about that pesky height? So this, this guy right here, he's the base. Now our height, well, fortunately, OP, our base lies along the x-axis. So our height is just the difference between q and the x-axis. But the x-axis has a y-coordinate of 0. So really, this is going to be a half, 10 minus 0, times, well, what's, what's the y-coordinate of q? That's going to be 8. Minus 0. So 1 half, 10 times 8, is 1 half of 80 which is going to be 40. So the area of triangle OPQ is 40. They didn't specify any units, so we don't really care for any. Find the area of OPQ, 40. All right, we're done. So now, Part two or part B, question two, part C. Point R is on the positive x-axis. Okay, so he's going to lie to the right of O, and he could lie to the left of P. He could coincide with P, or he could lie to the right of P. But he's definitely on the positive part of the x-axis. And R exists so that the area OQR is three times the area of OPQ, the one we just figured out. Determine the coordinates of R. All right. So once again, we draw ourselves our little picture. If you're doing it on your own sheet of paper, you could probably use the same picture for everything. But we have to keep redrawing, so 
We can keep refreshing our memories. All right. So we had P, O, we had Q. We know this height here is 8. We know this base here is 10. And we know R lies somewhere here. Now, if R lies between O and Q, or O and P, then the base of O, Q, R is going to be smaller. The height will be the same. And that will give us a smaller area of a triangle. In fact, it will sit within o, uh, o, Q, P, or O, P, Q. So we can be reasonably sure that R lies somewhere out here. Now, so ORQ has three times the area of OPQ, which is 40. We just figured that out in the last question. So we're looking for something with an area of 120. So he's got the same height as triangle OPQ because R lies on the x-axis. So he's not, he doesn't make the height look any different. He's just sort of an extension of the base of OPQ. So we have 8. So things are starting to fall into place. So we know that 120... 1 half base times height, which is 1 half base times 8. Okay. So if we rearrange this equation, we get 240 is base times 8, or rather 30 is the base. Right? We just divide through by 8. 240 divided by 8, that's 30. Another thing you can use your calculator for. Although, hopefully, you're, if you're doing these sorts of questions, you're a little proficient. Maybe you can do that in your head. So we're looking for a base of 30. Well, the base of triangle, ORQ, is just the line OR. And that tells us the length of OR. And since both of these guys lie on the x-axis, we can figure out that he's just that the length OR is just the difference of their x coordinates. So the x-coordinate, which we can sometimes write as rx, he's going to be length of OR and plus the x-coordinate of uh, the origin. Now the y-coordinate of R is 0. Since it lies on the x-axis, so putting this together, we have 30 as the x-coordinate, 0 as the y-coordinate for r. Okay. So there we go. We were able to reasonably guess as to where r might be. We used the given relationship of 3 times the area we just figured out. So now we know the area of ORQ, 120. We realize that our line on the x-axis means we have the same height, which is the distance from q to the x-axis, which is 8. This allows us to isolate what the potential base would be, a base length of 30. Okay? 
and then we use the given information of r lying on the positive x-axis to tell us that it's going to have a positive x-coordinate value and the difference between it and the origin in terms of just their x-coordinates will have to be this base length of 30. And from there, we're easily able to figure out both coordinates and determine the value of r. So that's part C done. How about D part? Point S has coordinates 18t. So wherever he is, his x coordinates 18, his other coordinate can vary. And t is going to be positive. Okay, that's definitely important. If the area of triangle OQS is 3 times the area of triangle OPQ, determine the value of t. Okay. So now we don't have quite the easy situation of something lying on the positive x-axis. My guess is we're probably not going to be able to use a simple base times height argument. We might be able to. We might not. Okay. So let's try to dive in and draw ourselves a little picture. Okay, so what do we got here? So that's our first line. There's our second line, and that met at 10, 0. And these guys met at negative 6, 8. And we had our origin. Now we don't need R anywhere. In what we just did or at least not yet I don't think it'll be related but we'll see so 18 over here so there's our 10 right there so this is where 18 is and we know that t is positive so it's going to be in the upper quadrant the upper right quadrant so s up here has coordinates 18 t and let's do as we did at the very start let's just highlight the points that we're talking about. So S is somewhere up here. We have P, we have O, and we have, oops, Q. All right, so these are the points we're talking about. Now, what line was it that we were trying to get, or what, what triangle? OQS. OQS is three times the area. Okay. So So let's just reposition where S was just to match our little diagram. And we'll erase the other one. All right, so there we go. There we have our picture. And we want OQS. Here's OQ. OQS, triangle we just drew in. We want that to be three times the area of OPQ. All right. So let's think. We don't have a nice, simple base anymore. Hmm. So what could we do? Well, we could use the formula for an area of a triangle in terms of its coordinates. That's certainly something, if you know that. That's something we could easily do, and we'd be able to isolate for t. What else could we try? Hmm. Well, we could try encasing it in a larger, uh, a larger sort of, Rectangle. Certainly that would be able to uh, do things for us. Problem with that is we don't quite know whether or not T is going to be, like, is S higher than Q or is Q higher than S? This is something we need to figure. Hmm. So we could approach it by trying one way and seeing if that works and trying another way and seeing if that works. 
What else could we possibly try? Well, the area OQS needs to be three times OPQ. And we just figured out where R should be, and R also has. Uh, or o OQR also has three times the area of OPQ. So could we use that in some way? Lots of different ways to think about this one. Okay. So what I'm going to try is I'm going to try the rectangle uh, idea that I just suggested. So we'll draw a little rectangle. Because see, now I know the length of this rectangle is going to be the distance from negative 6 to 18, which is going to be 24. Okay. And I have this distance up here. So we could name some of these guys. We can name this A and we can name this B. And we can name this point up here C. But here we're assuming that S lies higher than Q. Okay. And that, to some people, might not seem very desirable. But what does that mean? So. so it assumes that T is greater than or equal to 8. Rectangle ACSB has an area of eighteen minus negative six times T, which is twenty four T. Okay. Now we know the area we're shooting for is 120 for OQS, and we can reasonably figure out what the other triangles are. So this guy is the same as QCS, that triangle plus OSQ, that's the one we want, plus OBS, which is a right angle triangle, plus OAQ, which is another right angle triangle. So we have three right angle triangles and the triangle that we want. So OSQ, his area is three times the area of OPQ. Which we know from the last question, we're shooting for an area of 120. Okay. So now we know that 24T is something plus 120 plus something plus something. Okay. All right. So what is the area of OAQ? Well, what's what are the chord? The height here is 8. And this length right here is 6. Remember, A is going to have coordinates negative 6, 0. B is going to have coordinates 18, 0. And C is going to have coordinates negative 6, T. Okay. So a simple 1 half base times height calculation. 1 half base of 6 times a height of 8, we're looking at 24. Okay. How about 
triangle OBS. Okay, his height's going to be T. And his base is going to be 18. So one half uh, base was 18 times the height of T. So he's going to be 9T. And now this pesky QCS, this triangle. Now remember I said this assumes T is greater than or equal to 8. All right, I said that when we created this rectangle. And now that I'm thinking about it, maybe we don't need that. Hmm? Maybe we don't need this. What if we just were you able to use the area of a quadrilateral? This uh, the trapezoid here. A, B, Q, S. Hmm? That's just what I'm thinking. A, B, Q, S. All right. So now maybe I don't need this. And maybe it's triangle or trapezoid. A, B, Q, S. Then we remove any assumption about T and 8. So, That is a trapezoid, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no, that's not a trapezoid. Trapezoids have, oh, yeah, it is, but uh, it's AQ is parallel to BS. This guy up here is labeled wrong. Gotta be. A, B, S, Q. And down here we have A, B, S, Q. Okay. So now we have to try and remember what is the height of it, or what is the um, formula for the area of a trapezoid. Well, to figure out the area of a trapezoid, it's a formula uh, where you have to know which uh, lines in the parallel are, or which uh, lines of the trapezoid are parallel. So BS are the ones that are BS and AQ are parallel to each other. Okay, so. All right, so now it's one half the height, which is uh, 
So it's a half the distance between the uh, parallel lines and the sum of the lengths. of the parallel lines, okay? So half the distance between the parallel lines, what is that? That's the distance from A to B, okay? And we know what that distance is, it's 24, okay? And the sum of the lengths of the parallel lines, well, this length here is eight, and this length here is T, okay? So to perform this calculation, all we're going to need to do is plug these values into our formula, which we'll do on a separate piece of paper. All right. So the area of ABSQ is going to be one half. That's 18 minus negative 6. We already calculated this out when we thought it was going to be a rectangle. Eight plus T. So where do these guys come from? Well, this is AQ and this is BS, those lengths. So the sum of the lengths of the parallel lines. That's going to be 12 times 8 plus t, which is going to be, oops, that should be in brackets. So that's 96 plus 12t. Okay, that's great. So this 96 plus 12t, the, the total area of our trapezoid, is going to be the 120 we want, plus 24 for this smaller triangle, plus 9t for this other triangle. So that's going to be 120 plus 24 plus 9t. So now we can start rearranging this. 12t minus 9t, we bring all the t's over to one side, we get 3t. 120 plus 24, that's going to be 144 minus 96. Okay, and off the top of my head, I can't uh, just do that one, so we bust out our calculator. 48, okay. So to figure out just the value of t, we divide 48 by 3, and we get 16. So what was the question asking us to do? Determine the value of t? There we go. So how about just a little statement summing things up? The value of t is 16. Fantastic. And so it took a little longer. Um, I mean, we actually didn't quite know what we were doing at the start of D. Didn't really have a game plan, but we worked it around with it. We fiddled around. We started thinking it was going to be a rectangle, but it ended up being a quadrilateral. Uh, it could, probably could have been avoided if... Um, We've just used the coordinate formula for the area. And I suspect that there's probably a very nice way in the solutions of using our previous uh, part C, because it also demanded three times the area. So it's probably a nice way of doing that. My guess is it is probably, probably, mind you, uh, something to do with taking OQ as the base and getting, having S be the intersection of this line 
and the line parallel to QO going through R. That would be my guess. Um, but I enjoyed this way with trapezoids. It was perfectly fine. It worked out once it revealed itself to it to us. Uh, the, the assumption of T being greater than or equal to 8 kind of nagged at me, so it was nice that that popped out there. But that was question two, an interesting, fun little geometry question. Nothing particularly difficult about that. Just part D, it wasn't immediate to us which way we should approach the question. Okay, and uh, we'll move on to the final question, question number three, in the next video. So thank you so much for watching.